Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, what I'm going to do is review Ubuntu 2504, which was released last week. And it's an incredible release. It's powered by Linux kernel 6.14 and GNOME 48, and we're going to check it out in this video. And you know what? It's been a very busy week for me. Recently, we saw the release of Fedora 42, and then on the same week, Ubuntu 2504. I definitely have a lot going on. Anyway, I've had a lot of fun checking out the new Ubuntu release. Ubuntu 2504 features the latest GNOME desktop, as always. I installed it on my Gazelle because my ThinkPad was busy with the Fedora review at the same time, and I had a lot of fun checking it out. Before we dive in, though, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have a brand new PDF available in the shop that'll give you all kinds of tips for those of you that are switching to Linux. If you donate just $15 to support Learn Linux TV, you'll get this PDF, which will give you information on various Linux distros and desktop environments, myth busting, and more. It's over 40 pages full of information that's helpful to those of you that are just beginning. The PDF is available in my shop, like I mentioned, and the URL that you see on the screen will take you right to it. And while you're there, check out some of my Linux swag, like this brand new blue screen of death shirt, along with classics like my apt install coffee shirt, which I'm wearing today. Every purchase helps support my Linux content, and I greatly appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for supporting Linux learning. Now is time to dive into Ubuntu 2504, so let's do that right now. And first, let's start with what's new. Just like last week's release of Fedora, Ubuntu 2504 is powered by Linux kernel 6.14 and GNOME 48. The latest version of the GNOME desktop is a welcome upgrade. It's very solid. This new release contains some performance improvements, which is always great, but Ubuntu 2504 is going to be less impacted by them. Reason being, one of the biggest features in version 48 is the inclusion of triple buffering support, which aims to improve desktop performance, especially on older GPUs. However, the interesting thing here is that Ubuntu users have had this feature for a while now, as Ubuntu was the first to have it. The difference in GNOME 48 is literally that triple buffering is no longer exclusive to Ubuntu. Another new feature this time around is HDR for supported displays. This is a change that can improve your display quality, but it only benefits those that have the appropriate hardware. On my end, I don't, so I wasn't able to test this. And I've also been reading on Reddit that quite a few people are having strange issues while enabling HDR, so it's going to be hit or miss. The quirkiness of HDR support isn't specific to Ubuntu, as other distros are reporting problems as well. But it's worth checking out if you have the right hardware, after all, if you have issues with it, all you have to do is disable it, so why not give it a shot? You'll find the option in the display panel within GNOME settings. If your hardware supports HDR, you'll see an option for it right there. Anyway, just like I mentioned in my recent review for Fedora 42, GNOME 48 isn't astronomically different. It feels like more of a point release, so there's not much to talk about. Don't get me wrong, there's a ton of improvements in this latest version, but most of them are just minor tweaks. One thing that's interesting to mention is GNOME's new well-being feature. This is for those of you that want to track screen time, which is exactly what it enables you to do. It's available within GNOME settings, and when you access it, you'll see a screen time graph, and then some toggles you could use to enable various features. Now, this isn't something that I track personally, but for those of you that do, you'll probably enjoy this. Another feature that's worth at least a quick mention is notification stacking. This helps you keep better track of all those pesky notifications. It's definitely a welcome change, but it's also not going to change your world. Other than that, there's not a ton of huge features or noteworthy changes to mention. Sure, there's theme improvements, various tweaks, and other smaller things, but all in all, this new release of Ubuntu seems to be focused almost completely on refinement and small details, and that's not a bad thing at all. Something I'd like to mention is that the overall quality of Ubuntu 2504 seems very on point to me. And this is great because I've had strange issues while reviewing previous versions lately. Installation issues, screen artifacts, and other problems. However, that's not the case with Ubuntu 2504. This time around, everything works, and I haven't had a single issue. I think the development team has done a tremendous job here. Installation was straightforward and worked on the first try, and I've had no glitches or error messages at all. I know it's only been out for a week or so at the time of recording, but from my experience so far, this is the most stable version of Ubuntu released for over a year. 
When it comes to the installation process, the desktop installer for Ubuntu seems to be very mature at this point. I've had issues with it ever since the new installer was rolled out during previous cycles, but like I mentioned, I had no problems at all this time around. In fact, I'd say Ubuntu's installer is one of the best available. Sure, it may not have the same number of options that Debian's installer does, but everything that most people need is present. It's also worth noting that the installer does see some new features which are primarily targeted at sysadmins. For example, you can now utilize local paths for importing auto-install config files, there's some dual boot tweaks in regard to BitLocker systems, and there's also an ARM64 install image for virtual machines. That's definitely going to excite the more advanced among my audience, but all in all, the installer is solid, so I don't have any complaints here. My overall opinion on Ubuntu 2504 is that I think it's pretty solid. It's super stable, has really great performance, a great installer, and overall, everything has worked out very well for me. So if you're curious about Ubuntu's new release, then go ahead and dive in. I'm sure at least some of you are wondering whether or not Ubuntu 2504 is good enough to make me switch. As you may recall, in my recent Daily Driver video, I let you guys know that Fedora is my distro of choice nowadays. So, am I an Ubuntu user now? Well, no, I'm still on Fedora. But don't get me wrong, this new release is really good, but I still prefer Fedora overall. The thing is, although both Fedora and Ubuntu feature the exact same desktop environment, they target two different audiences. When it comes to Fedora, it has a much cleaner GNOME environment. There's not a lot of custom tweaks. The project ships GNOME as GNOME's developers intended. In fact, Fedora's integration of GNOME is still the best, even with Ubuntu 2504 entering the scene. On the other hand, Ubuntu's implementation is anything but pure. There's a lot of custom tweaks, with some of them being quality of life improvements, such as including a helpful panel on the left side of the screen, and the themes and icons are heavily customized. There's built-in extensions that basically change GNOME into something else entirely when it lands in Ubuntu. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Some people really enjoy Ubuntu's modifications, and the changes that are made definitely help make the experience better. However, Fedora is for those of us that want to let software speak for itself rather than it being made into a brand. And it may sound like I'm being critical of Ubuntu here, but I'm totally not. There's a legitimate audience for both types of GNOME implementations. But one criticism I do have of Ubuntu, however, is their insistence on the Snap format. For those of you that aren't aware, Snap packages are one of three competing formats for the next generation of software delivery in Linux, with Flatpak and App Images being the others. I've covered all three in my channel if you'd like to learn more about them. Anyway, for the most part, Flatpak is won out, gaining more industry acceptance than Snap packages. In the years that Canonical have been developing the Snap format, they just haven't made much traction when compared to Flatpak. In fact, I predict that eventually they'll drop the format altogether and embrace Flatpaks, much like they dropped Unity and went back to GNOME quite some time ago. The problem with this is that Ubuntu's insistence on snap packages makes the project seem a bit ignorant, which could potentially start impacting their install base. However, that's a complaint about Ubuntu in general, not necessarily this release in particular. I think Ubuntu's developers should be proud of themselves, they did a really great job. Now, while I'm sticking with Fedora on my end, I want to underscore the fact that I absolutely recommend Ubuntu 2504, and it's been a great release. And I just love the fact that we had two awesome distro releases in the same week. It's been a ton of fun checking out both Ubuntu 2504 as well as Fedora 42. And there you go! In this video, I checked out the latest release of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 2504, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then be sure to click that like button to let YouTube know. I would really appreciate that. Anyway, thanks again for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.